morning. This is Sally Ishikawa. I first met Sally about a year ago, and I will never forget when I met her because right here in this sanctuary, Sally came through a line full of people. And I don't remember everyone I met that morning, but I'll never forget Sally because Sally and her sister Kate, she handed me a picture that she had drawn and chalked. She gave that picture to me. And it is in that same giving spirit that I have grown to know and love Sally. Sally has a giving spirit. She gives freely of her smiles, as you can see. She gives freely of her love and she gives every single week to the community garden that we have here at the church. She gives of her time at the bun soup kitchen. And today we are here in these waters to celebrate Sally giving her heart and her life to Jesus. Sally is the daughter of Janice and Keith Ishikawa. She is the big sister to Kate. And out of all of those identities, the one that matters the most is Sally is a child of God's. She has chosen to be his. So Sally, do you believe that God loves you so much that he gave you the gift of Jesus? Yes. Do you believe that Jesus loves you so much that he died on the cross for you and for your sins? Yes. Sally, do you accept the gift of Jesus' love, the gift of his forgiveness, the gift of his grace, and the gift of his salvation? Yes. Then Sally, I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This Sally, she is a child of God's and a member of this church. And so many of you have invested in her life and been a part of the steps of her spiritual journey. Thank you for being her church family and for loving her. Sally, welcome to God's family. Hello, Shane. my friends. How are you today? That's excellent. I am so glad to see you this morning. Now, I have a question for you. We're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about love. What are some things that you love? Yes. Ice cream. Oh my goodness. I like ice cream too. Yes. A park. Very nice. Yes. Your parents. Okay. Yes. Grandparents. Yes. God. What else do you love? Yes. Your cat. Yes. The fair. It's coming up very soon. Yes. Your family. Yes. Your dogs. You guys have lots of things that you love. Who are some people that you love? Yes. Your dog? Yeah. Jesus? Yes. Your cat? All right. Yes. Your family? Yes. Your family? Yes. God? Yes. God? Yes. God? You guys really love God. That is fantastic. Now, I guess something that I want to share with you all. Money. What is this? A penny. Now, as I'm passing this out, I want to ask you guys, how do you treat things that you love? How do you treat people that you love? What do you do? You treat them kindly. Oh, there's one. You got it? There's one. Oh, no. Scooch in, guys. Come get them. Come get them. 
What else do you do with somebody? How do you treat them kindly? You say in kind words. You, you do what? You give them things that they need. Now, what if I were to tell you that these pennies are very special to me? In fact, I put them on a pillow every night. I snuggle with them. Go ahead, hold your penny up to your face. And I sing to them, and I give them kisses. What would you guys think? That would be disgusting. OK. <laughs> It'd be kind of strange, wouldn't it? The thing is that we're not supposed to treat pennies the way that we treat people. In fact, we are supposed to love people very, very much. And so singing and kissing a penny would be kind of weird, wouldn't it? It'd be kind of strange. You know, the Bible talks a lot about money, or it talks about money. It talks about how we should act towards money. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 says that we should live our lives free from the love of money. Now, let me make sure that you guys have it in your hands. Hold it in your hands. Hold it really tight. Don't let go of it. Live your lives free from the love of money. And in, in verse 16, it says, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. So in other words, the Bible says, don't love your money. Don't give it kisses or snuggles or anything like that. And it also says to share what you have. Do you think it's easy or hard to share sometimes? It's hard. Especially if all you have is one penny or one favorite toy or one best friend or one quarter. Yeah, yeah, it can be hard to share that too. You know, it's hard to share those things. But you know, when we love Jesus, and when we love other people, we share what we have. So today I'm gonna give you a challenge. Let me see your pennies, hold up your pennies. As you go back to your seat, I challenge you to give your penny to somebody else. I challenge you to give your penny to somebody else. God has given us gifts to share with other people, and to help other people. Isn't that a great responsibility to be able to share? I think that's fantastic. So today I encourage you to share. Will you guys pray with me? Okay, let's pray. Dear Jesus, help us to love you most of all, and help us to share with people around us who we love and who you love. In your name we pray. Amen. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now I see. Twas grace that taught my heart to fear. And grace my fears relieved. How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace the Lord has promised 
good to me is love my hope secures he will my shield and portion be as long as life endures my chains are gone i've been set free my god my savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing grace my chains are shall soon dissolve like snow the sun forbear to shine but god who called me here below will be forever mine will be forever mine you are forever mine thank you Tina thank you so much today is prove the tithe Sunday hope you remember that so uh, really every Sunday should be that but there's an obvious text when it comes to this opportunity that God has given us and responsibility. Some say, well, it's in the Old Testament. I say it's in the Bible. And so we go to Malachi, the last book of the Old Testament, the third chapter, verses eight through 10. Will a man rob God? Yet you rob me, but you ask, how do we rob you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, the whole nation of you, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, to see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that you will not have enough room for all of it. So today we conclude a series, I Believe in God, But... And so we decided to end it with a really easy one. I believe in God, but what's mine is mine. Monday of this week, I made the best journey I could ever make. Don't do it near enough. Went three and a half hours up to Southwest Virginia to visit my three-year-old granddaughter on her birthday. We went out to the Mexican restaurant at her request. Of course, she didn't eat a thing. Then we went to Walmart to get some milk. And while in Walmart, I bought her a bag of M&Ms. Just a Slater thing, we love our M&Ms. So we got back in the car and she has her M&Ms out. And I asked her if she would give me a few of her M&Ms. And she did not respond appropriately. <laughs> and so I asked her a second time and she said, they're mine. She got that from her mother, by the way. Um, so now there's several things that I'm thinking at this point, some of which I can't really say here from the pulpit. But number one, I'm thinking I bought those M&Ms to begin with. And second of all, she doesn't know how strong I am. I could grab those things out of her hand and eat them if I wanted to in a second. But I didn't need to because I was already eating my, only, my own bag. But then I thought, you know, I could go back in Walmart with my credit card and buy enough M&Ms to last her more than she could eat in a month. You see, we all have M&Ms. Some in this room have a huge pile of M&Ms. 
Some have a medium size, and some have a small amount of M&Ms. But our loving Father, he comes to all of us and says, will you give me some M&Ms? Just a few. And we say, sorry, what's mine is mine. Just a few. No, I worked hard for those M&Ms. I earned those M&Ms. Those M&Ms didn't come free. Are we still like Chloe sometimes? And we've forgotten that everything, first of all, that we have comes from God. Or maybe more importantly, have we forgotten that God is wanting and able to bless us with all the M&Ms we could ever want in our life? We couldn't spend them all. We couldn't enjoy them all. We certainly couldn't eat them all. So I want to say something to all of you. You've heard a thousand and one times. But we're doing this series, I Believe in God, but... God wants to bless every one of you. Any fathers in this room, we all want to bless our children. And yet we have a God who is so much more loving, more generous, more able to bless us. I sometimes think maybe what God does every morning when he wakes up is just think about how much he can possibly bless you and me. But maybe the problem is, We've used that word bless and thrown it around 10 different ways all the time that it almost means nothing at all anymore. I'm so blessed. God bless, somebody sneezes, bless you. A comedian gets up and uses God's name in vain 20 different times and then says, God bless you. What does that mean even anymore? When we say bless or blessing, Usually we're thinking about the intangible things that God gives us. Love and joy and peace and hope. And that's, that's all great and fine and very appropriate. But I think the blessing of God is this, that we put ourselves in a position to receive the tangible and intangible favor of God. Let me just say that again. The real blessing is where we receive the tangible and intangible favor of God. And here's the fun part. We are blessed. We then get to be a blessing through to others and to this world. There are some people in this room right now who've been given things in their life that you would have never asked for and I would have never wanted for you. We have so many people dealing with cancer in many different ways. And yet some of them, not all of them, but many of them are blessing my life. They're teaching me about how to have faith. They're modeling for me how to be an overcoming power through the presence of Jesus Christ. And they're blessing my life because they have been given the blessing of knowing Jesus Christ and the blessing of a church family and the blessing of good friends. And I'm looking at some of you right now. You see, God doesn't just want you to be good. He wants you to be good for something. But there's a golden cage that we all get trapped in if we're not careful. And in that golden cage, what happens is that we start living in the land of ing, I-N-G. Buying, hoarding, earning, getting, housing, clothing, hurrying. Just this ing that we are trapped in and seem to just live our lives by and we start thinking that our stuff is just our stuff. We worked hard for it, we deserve it, we earned it, and this kind of thing. Yeah, you know, I wish sometimes I could preach like the black preachers. I heard one black preacher said, what God wants to do is for you to get into a position where he could put a bless on your ing and a super on your natural. See, I can never preach like that. I mean, isn't that beautiful? He wants to bless your ing and super your natural. Yeah, in this church, there are two things that nobody wants me to talk about. And so I only talk one time a year in January about money. So this year I'm blasting it off. I'm going twice as often out of the whole year. And nobody wants me to tell you about how to raise your children. And why is that? Because those are the two most valuable things in your life for so many people. Those are the two things that are so personal to you that you care about so much. Your money is just an extension of who you are. I, I hate it 
When I hear somebody say, I wonder what he's worth and what they're asking is how much money they have, as if that has anything to do with what your worth with God really is. And so we get this land of ing, that God that we are trapped in. So how do you get to the place of blessing? I want to show you this morning. So I want to invite anybody who ever just, you know, jump at the opportunity, the very first one to do this. I want you to bring me up. If you have a $100 bill, bring it up and just give it to me. Just if you have a $100 bill, just bring it up and give it to me. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right, Kate, give me a real $100 bill. Now, listen, none of y'all are stupid. <laughs> I mean, you know what's going on here. I gave her this $100 bill. We arranged all this ahead of time, right? And thankfully, you gave it to me, <laughs> right? But when I said bring it, she brought it. Nobody else brought me $100, but she brought it. Now, why was it so easy for Kate to bring me $100? It wasn't hers to begin with. It wasn't hers to begin with. And God says to all of us, just bring it. And then some of us say, well, what's mine is mine. But did we ever say, well, this wasn't mine to begin with. And so I will give it to you because it wasn't Kate's to begin with. And so it was really easy for her to give it to me. All right, you can sit down. You did great. Thank you. So glad you cooperated. Uh, so. <laughs> now I got one more little thing here. And I have not prearranged this, so if you don't help me, the Methodists are going to beat you to lunch today. Uh, so if anybody has a $10 bill, I need you to bring up the $10 bill. It's just, just whoever, $10 bill. I'm telling you, we're going to wait until somebody brings it. $10. Do I hear five? Do I hear 20? Here goes Vinny. Okay, here. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. Vinny, hold on. Come here. <laughs> All right, and so... Hey man, I've already got it. I don't, I don't, well, you, you, we split it this is off script. You can put it all in the offering plate as you leave. Uh, okay. <laughs> but uh, so, Vinny gave me 10. I'm giving you 100. Take it. Give it to me back later. Okay, <laughs> anyway. anyway. <laughs> all right, you can go. <laughs> anyway, no, 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 sure. Uh, so, here's the deal. I gave. Vinny gave me only $10. I gave him $100. Imagine I'm God for a moment. It's very hard to imagine. But imagine I'm God for a moment. He says, here's the deal, folks. I'll give you 100. You just give me 10. I mean, how great a deal is that? And yet, for many of us, it's still the deal where it's hard to come by and do that kind of thing. So let me, let me get back to my text here. For That was fun. Uh, Anyway, so God is saying, I'm going to bless your life. I'm God. I want you to enjoy 90 out of 100 things in your life. All this stuff I want you to bless you with. I want you to know that this is what I want for you. All I want is the 10. That's all that required of you. And by the way, you know, God could have said in the Bible, he certainly could have said, I'm giving you 10. And you need to leave, live on the 10. God doesn't do that. He says, I'm giving you 100. You live on the 90, and I'll just ask for nothing more than the 10. God wants to bless us. But you'll never know how true that is until you're willing to do this very thing. Yeah, you know, please understand, God doesn't need your money. God can do whatever God wants to do. This isn't about fundraising. It's not about meeting the budget. It's about faith raising. God simply wants you to know, folks, how cool it is to completely trust him, to be that free, to be that secure about things that you know God is going to take care of every need that you have. You see, if you live in the land of Ing, you're living in a small world. I do funerals for 38 years. I've never said in any sermon I've preached or any sermon I've ever heard that somebody was blessed because they saved up a lot of money or because their specialty was being safe in life 
But the real thing they were great at was staying secure in their own little financial world. I'm not telling you to give all your money to the church, nor is God. What I am telling you is don't be a victim. Don't live a small life. If your life spills over, then spill it out a little bit and let some, this world know the difference that God has made in your life. You've heard me say, no matter what goes on in our lives, Kathy and I, we give 10% of our income, the first 10, so we never miss it. We never had it to begin with. And we don't do it for the church's sake, although that would be a good enough reason. We do it for our sake. We don't want to live small lives. We don't want money to master us. We want to be the master of our money. Life is simply too short to be about nothing more than me, myself, and mine. So we give 10%. So why do we do that? Because we want to put ourselves in a position where God can bless the ing that is so much a part of our world. So here's my question for all of you. Do you want to live with 90% of your income supernaturally blessed by God? Or do you want to live with 100% of your income outside of God? To me, it's just that simple and actually that easy of what we're being asked to do. Malachi there is the only place in all the Bible. He says, put me to the test. Have you really tried it and found him wanting or have you never tried it at all, in fact? He says, if you do it, I will pour out blessings. I will bless the ing in your life. What would that look like? New York Times, sometimes, this is the New York Times, not a, not a Christian paper. They had an article a few years ago about a lady named Eleanor Boyer. Eleanor Boyer is 72 years old. And she won the New Jersey lottery, $11.2 million. In the article it says, she is giving it away. About half of it to the church she worshiped in all her life. Don't you wish she was a member of this church? <laughs> and the rest of the town rescue squad, the volunteer fire department, some other groups that served the town she grew up in. And then it goes towards the end. And the writer notices that she has a couple of envelopes there. He says, those envelopes, she said, oh, I made them up weeks ago. A dollar for first collection, another dollar for second. They were already sealed. But now I have some new envelopes, so I think I'll put a little more in. A little more such as a little over five million dollars. And then the article ends and says, and there goes Eleanor Boyer, driving down the street of her little town in her 1968 Chevy Malibu, the richest person in the whole town. So, do you want to be rich or do you want to be wealthy? You see, Eleanor Boyer is not wealthy. She gave it all away. But there's something about her, isn't there, that is incredibly rich. And so, I get it with Chloe, three years of age. But I hope she'll one day grow up to trust God. And I hope you will grow up and trust God. And there's nothing like being free. There's nothing like being secure. And there's nothing like knowing the bless on your ing and the super on your natural. So our hymn of invitation this morning, it's hymn number 669, long ago you taught your people. Had a wonderful family join the early service. Maybe in this service there are some who wish to make a profession of faith or unite with this church from another church family or some renewed commitment. I'll be the front to receive you. Let us stand and sing to the glory of God, hymn number 669. You'll be seated for just a moment uh, before we Welcome our newest family member. I want to call in Dorothy Bowman, one of our deacons and one of our leaders in the prayer ministry, to share an invitation with you. We approach the new year of programs and ministries and worship this fall. The deacon prayer team would like to invite you to a special time tonight. It's at 6 p.m. 
we're going to, um, you'll have an opportunity to hear testimonies of God's faithfulness. Um, we will also have a prayer time. Nobody will be singled out or put on the spot. We would just like you to join us in prayer for this fall season in our church and for its ministries. Um, we are meeting at 6 p.m. Um, in the room that is, I think it's room 120. It's the double room in the new building, 6 p.m. tonight. Please join us for a, a special time of uh, hearing about God's faithfulness to our church. Thank you. Thank you. Let me say a word of welcome to the guests that are with us. We're really delighted by your presence and just that you've added to our company. We love you. Stop by. We have a guest reception room over to the side. Uh, Mary Hitchcock from our outreach team. Be glad to share any information or just get to know you better. I'd love for you to do that. Let me remind you that Praise in the Park is this Thursday night, our last one of the summer. It's just if you're going to be gone Labor Day, it's a great opportunity, or even if you're not, to come out and worship in a very special atmosphere and join the park. And then I hope you'll pay attention to the brochure in, in the bulletin this morning. We're really excited about the Wednesday night coming up and all the different options that are provided. Have a new chef that's just expert in this kind of stuff. And so all the, everything is good about it. We hope you'll be planning to be a part of that. And let me say, it's good to see Susan Evans. <laughs> Susan Blair, uh, who's had her own dealing with cancer and surgery and just so good the first time back with us, and we love you. Okay, Emma, if you come up and join me. So we celebrate Emma Wyatt, who comes, beautiful young lady, Jennifer and uh, Adam's daughter, that comes to make her profession of faith in Christ as her Lord and Savior. We've had four baptisms in the two services today. And Emma, we look forward to your baptism. And just especially, this is our highest celebration that you've given your life to Christ and inviting him into your heart. So all you who join in celebrating this decision, let it be known by an uplifted hand or sign of welcome celebration. And this, I so much encourage you and trust and you will come up and welcome our newest family member. And this is what we're here for. This is our highest celebration. And we see God in you. So praise the Lord. So let us bow for the benediction now and the response to follow. Christ before you. Christ behind you. Christ within you. Grace upon grace. Mercy upon mercy. Love, all love. Jesus Christ our Lord. Thanks be to God.